I'm Will Kane in for Laura Ingram, and this is a special edition of the Ingram Angle from New York City tonight. To the rescue, Barack Obama, the former president, is reportedly making near constant calls to the White House. Panic seems to be setting in that Joe Biden is going to lose the election, but it doesn't stop at just phone calls. In minutes, right across the street from where I am right now, Biden will be flanked by not only Barack Obama, but Bill Clinton for a star-studded fundraiser. In fact, let's go live to Radio City Music Hall, where Fox's Nate Foy is standing by with the details. Nate. Will, the energy is rising right now. This fundraiser just 30 minutes away from starting at Radio City Music Hall, where President Joe Biden is there alongside former presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton. Tons of money uh, being raised as a result of this fundraiser. The Biden campaign says $25 million. Tickets to the event are as little as $225 and as much as half a million dollars uh, just to get inside. There's different tiers and you get different things for how much you pay. I'll get into that momentarily. But take a look uh, at our live camera right now. As you can see, this funding boost for the Biden reelection campaign uh, is not coming without some drama. Hundreds of pro-Palestinian protesters have flanked the Radio City Music Hall, uh, where you're looking right now is on 6th Avenue, where hundreds of protesters are out right now uh, chanting, uh, you are not welcome, Joe Biden. I'm looking at a sign right now that says, defend the Palestinians, defend Gaza, defeat U.S.-Israel genocidal war. Uh, we also had this moment moments ago that we captured of the protesters chanting. Listen here. Will, President Joe Biden landed in New York City today with former President Obama. Tonight's fundraiser comes after months of pressure on Biden for his support of Israel. The main event at tonight's fundraiser will be a conversation between Presidents Biden, Obama and Clinton, moderated by late night talk show host Stephen Colbert. A picture with all three presidents will cost $100,000. And I mentioned those tiers of entrance. Uh, $250,000 and $500,000 tickets will get you into separate private receptions after the main event. Uh, the event will be hosted by actress Mindy Kaling. A lot of celebrities here. There's going to be musical performances from Queen Latifah as well as Lizzo uh, starting again at 730. But right now outside, a lot of people are singing a uh, very different chants motivated by a very different opinion of President Joe Biden. We'll send it back to you, Will. You know, Nate, they say a picture speaks a thousand words. That video speaks millions of words. A star-studded celebrity event at half a million dollars a ticket inside, outside the images on your screen. Thank you so much, Nate Foy. All right, joining me now is Ari Fleischer, former White House press secretary, and Ben Dominich, editor-at-large of The Spectator. Both are Fox News contributors. So, Ari, what do you make of this? You see what's happening inside this star-studded event, and you see what's taking place outside the Biden-Obama-Clinton fundraiser. Well, the first thing I make of it is get ready, Republicans. You are going to get out-fundraised all year long. The fact of the matter is, well, the Democrats have become the party of the rich. The Democrats actually defeat Republicans now among those who earn more than $100,000 a year. Those are now Democratic voters. They used to be Republican. Now they're overwhelmingly Democratic voters. And when you look at all the different labor unions, service employee unions, the infrastructure of the Democratic Party, the super PACs, not to mention the event tonight, across the board, the Democrats, because of their rich contributors, are going to outraise Republicans. Republicans are going to have to work real hard, and it's a wake-up shot, a warning to anybody who wants Republicans to win, that they're going to have to contribute, they're going to have to work hard, because the Democrats hold the cards, they've got the advantage. Well, I appreciate that analysis, Ari, and I, don't, I hope not to be naive of the role of money and donors in politics. But Ben, what we also see on the screen is a problem in the left flank of the Democrat Party. We know that Joe Biden has very little hope of persuading anyone, I would suggest, to the center right of the country. And that leaves independence. And, and that leaves, I think, this poll. Take a look at this on what is Joe Biden's biggest accomplishment over the first four years of his presidency. The number one answer, Ben, nothing. Now, that, I think, speaks to independence, Ben. I mean, they will try to make an argument that it's the economy, 
But if everyone is sitting here going, what has he done? Nothing. That's got to play as big of a role as money and donors. You know, it's a huge problem for them. Uh, Ari's right that uh, the Republicans are facing a really daunting task here because they are going to get out fundraised. They are going to see the big money going to the Democrats and the fact that, you know, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama are linking arms to save Joe and potentially save, you know, Obama's legacy with him, uh, you know, is something of significance. I do think it's kind of desperate for them to be turning to Stephen Colbert and Mindy Kaling. I, I think that, you know, if they'd gone to Radio City a couple weeks ago when Shane Gillis was uh, selling it out, they would actually hear some good comedy. But I do think that in this instance, it's a sign of how much they are going to pull out all the stops to try to prevent former President Trump from returning to power. Uh, and we shouldn't underestimate it. But that progressive flank that you mentioned, that's a real problem for them, and it's one that they're very scared of. Uh, you can see it in the images that you see out there in the streets. These are not people who are going to be won back easily, and it's why this White House has been tying itself in knots over the Israel issue over the past uh, several weeks in ways that have you know, put them in impossible situations, really, because they, they are saying one thing publicly, one thing behind the scenes. John Kirby's trying to spin on their behalf, right. uh, and I don't think that it's actually working. I think they really are putting themselves in a bad position. So, so Ari, back to you on this. Uh, so let's, let's, let's talk about what that money, how that money could be used. So the Biden administration, I think, has now three years of convincing the American public that reality is not reality, that they want to control perception. That's part of the fight against misinformation. But they also need to create an alternative reality, and we hear them talking about the economy. It seems to be landing on deaf ears, by the way. Take a look at this poll as well asking people if they feel better off than they were four years ago. And the overwhelming answer there, again, is no. People do not feel better off. In fact, they feel 52% worse off than they did four years ago. But that money will be designed to, again, try to control people's minds, try to control perception, Ari. Well, it will be used in the billion-dollar campaign that Joe Biden is promising, which will dwarf anything that Donald Trump's going to be able to put together to convince the American people that that which they know, that which they feel, that which they measure at their dinner table, rising rents, rising food, all those things that they touch tangibly are wrong. That the right. economy is actually really good, the economy is getting better, and costs are coming down. They're going to try to fool just enough people to win their votes for Joe Biden to win. You know, that's what any campaign does, political campaign. You spend money to convince the voters that you need to get. Um, and they're going to get a huge boost in that, Will, from the media. You can already see it right. where the media loves to run up the stories about saying the economy is much better than people think and that people are better off now than they were four years ago, even though polling shows that most people think they're not. So between the money they raise, the media boost they get, this is the heart of Joe Biden trying to claw his way back to the White House, hopefully, in his opinion, trying to beat Donald Trump. And I That's think where what, the money will go. I think what we're seeing with this, with this marshalling of celebrities and the inclusion of Obama and Clinton is they're going to attempt to make this election about something other than Joe Biden. Ari, Ben, thank you guys so much for being on The Ingram Angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.